to start videos like this. Like, hey y'all, it's Leanne with her broken brain and the TBR that is very much a result of trying to keep it happy. Yeah, that'll do. Roll the thing. Hi guys, it's Leanne. Oh wait, we did that bit already. Welcome to my April TBR and a little bit of a mental health update because I think we need one. As you can see, I have entitled this video the Anti-Stack-It TBR and that is because this month we are doing readathons, guys. That is all we are doing. I am participating in two. One of them is the wonderful Book Buddy-a-thon which is hosted by Elena and Janet and they are wonderful and the other one is the Owls Readathon which is intensely long and very complicated and yet is giving my brain the structure it so desperately needs at this moment. So Stack It by its very nature is there to motivate me to get through a massive stack of books. There's a cat playing with a toy in the background. Sorry if you can hear the noise, but it's too cute to make him stop. The very nature of Stack It is to get through a stack of books from book one to book however many there are in the stack and for me to read them all without interruptions and, you know, without skipping any. If I want to skip a book, I have to unhaul it because if I don't want to read it now, then I'm probably not going to read it again anytime soon. But this is where it gets a little bit complicated when I am having a bad brain time because I am at heart a mood reader. I'm very motivated by whim and that is why Stack It was born, to help me get through big stacks of books, some of which are backlist titles that have been on my shelves for a while. And for the most part, it works great. But on this particular occasion, Leanne's brain is, is, is saying no. Mm -mm, absolutely not. Get stuffed. Most people would put a timestamp somewhere on the screen or in the description below if you wanted to skip past all of the mental health talk and just get to the list of books that I'm going to be consuming this month. But I'm not going to do that because I am a massive advocate of talking about mental health and anxiety. Don't particularly enjoy doing it, I don't think any of us do, but I think it's really necessary. I think that when we are having bad brain times the best thing to do is to connect with other people and realise that you're not on your own. It is the fundamental way to treat any kind of mental health issues. It is not just you, you're not alone, you're not in a bubble. Other people are there. Other people have gone through this and got out the other side. And before I go any further with the mental health talk, I'm going to say it's okay that I am having a bad brain time. It's okay if you are having a bad brain time. Mental health, as I have said thousands of times, is not like this. It's like this. And just conversely, it's not like that either, even though our brain sometimes tries to convince us that it is. So if you guys are caught up on my videos, then you will probably know that at the end of March, I was scheduled to go away for five nights with my wonderful, wonderful, lovely wife, Helen, and just chill out in the sun. I pre-filmed two videos to go up when I was away, so last week, the week of no videos, and those were just two book calls, a crime corner and a not crime corner and I had fully good intentions of getting those videos up before I left but I vastly, vastly underestimated the amount of anxiety that I would feel about going on a plane and in fact going away. I used to really love going away, I used to love making lists of stuff to put in suitcases and things like that and nah, not anymore. I really struggle with being in confined spaces where I can't just leave if I want to and that's one of those things with mental health is I think if you tell yourself it's all right I have a way out you're fine but you're in a big metal box in the sky there isn't any way out and because I'm not rich I don't fly first class so I fly next to other people and I increasingly as time goes on have issues with germs and germ phobia and that is something that I have never talked about on this channel before. I think it's so important to share our experiences about our whole spectrum of mental health but I am much much happier to talk about my anxiety or my depression because I've been talking about that since I was 13 but I find it difficult to talk about the germ thing because it's it still triggers me to talk about it. It doesn't trigger me generally to talk about anxiety and depression because I'm 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 good at that. I can articulate those things. 
I can't articulate the other thing. So anyway, hold on more tea. I vastly overestimated how stressed I would be. And so the videos didn't get edited and they didn't go up and then I felt awful because that was why they were there in the first place. Then I went away and although the plane was actually really good, it was one of the best flights that I've ever had in my life, I still had to go on a plane and I still had to have all the feelings of going on a plane and then I still had to think, you know, I've got five great days here but then it ends with a plane. Anxiety is complicated when you're going on holiday. So everything was fine. <laughs> And then this happened. There was one tree in the entire complex which had big flowers on it and it was raining one day and I stood on one of the only flowers which were palm sized on slippy tile floors and I, I fell bitch, I, I fell. <whistles> Ironically, I fell on and broke the caution wet floor sign that they had just put up. So this was my ankle and then this was my ankle and uh, it still pretty much looks like picture B and it definitely hurts like it did in picture B and that just compounded the anxiety and I spent the rest of my holiday just trying to outsmart my brain, just trying to run it in different directions. But what I didn't do was reading because my brain, I can't. When I have that much anxiety, if I sit down and look at something and it is not utterly captivating me immediately, my head goes to all the bad places. So I didn't read much and then I came home and then I panicked irrationally because that is part of anxiety. Anxiety is not logical, it does not follow logical patterns. I'm generally quite chill about my channel. I either get videos up or I don't and I, I entirely follow how my brain feels at the time but I've been really really good recently and I've been so much enjoying the process of filming and things that I then was like what do I do with these videos? I have these videos sitting there, I should upload these videos and then I didn't because I avoided it because then I thought maybe I'm not on holiday anymore so I'm not going to upload the videos and it, it was just a mess and it was entirely in my own head. So yeah, the long and short of this extremely rambly story <coughs> <clears throat> which has completely buggered my voice is that I'm not doing very well right now and that's okay because it happens to all of us who have anxiety and depression we have peaks and we have troughs and sometimes we just have to work through them and just start building ourselves up the other side and that's where I am so now I'm going to talk about books and how books are going to make me feel better because that is what books are there to do so I've decided I'm gonna post this video, which is my TBR for April, obviously. And I'm not gonna be posting a tops and bottoms video because I read almost nothing in March. And I am then gonna post the two videos that I pre-filmed for you guys because there's nothing wrong with them except that I preface them with saying that I'm on holiday. And obviously you guys know now what happened in regards to that. And I'm just gonna try and stop overthinking and being an anxiety monster because it's not helping me. Now, on to the actual bookish portion of this video. When my brain feels like this, in order to self-care it into oblivion, I just need to give it the things that it wants. And what it wants right now are lists and books and no sense of pressure or order whatsoever. And it turns out that a lot of the books for Book buddy -athon can also double as books for the owls. So. <laughs> <laughs> go me making two lists for my brain that it is able to tick off simultaneously think about the amount of self-care gratification points that we're going to get from that people I should mention that my buddy for the book buddy -athon is my wonderful podcast partner in crime Kirsty and it's very appropriate for us this year because book buddy -athon is themed this year all by 90s tv shows which is you know, yeah, yeah. So the first challenge for Book buddy is 90210. Does anybody else who watches Dry Grace have a problem with not saying 90210 now? Is it just me? I don't think it's just me. And the prompt for that is a book with the number and the title and for that I have picked a fairly typical cosy read for Leanne and that is a Poirot. This is three act tragedy. This is the 11th book in the Poirot series and it's an interesting one because it's a very standard Poirot premise. Sir Charles Cartwright invites 13 people to dinner and 
those 13 people have dinner and then one of them dies. They choke on like a cocktail olive or something. And Poirot is thoroughly unimpressed. He's like, meh, very predictable, very predictable way to kill someone. Except then it's a little bit less predictable because he can't find any, any motive anywhere for anybody to have done this. Like none. Like he can find no motive. And that does not amuse him. And an unamused Poirot makes an amused Leanne. It's, it's like a mathematical equation with funny little symbols and stuff. Next up is Dawson's Creek which is a book with over 400 pages and for this I have picked The Stranger Beside Me by Anne Rule which is actually the book that I started reading on holiday and between all of my little catastrophes I only managed to read like two or three percent on my Kindle here and there but nevertheless I am thoroughly loving Anne Rule's writing. It is so so incredibly victim based as opposed to Ted Bundy the media darling who I am thoroughly sick of at this point, can I just say. Can we stop making things about how fascinating he was and maybe try and remember some of the names of his victims? Just saying. Not that that makes me salty or anything. Mm -mm. The next one is New Girl, a new to you author or book and for this one I have picked up a book that I think features in the book haul that you guys are about to see and that is Call Me Evie. This one is about Evie who has been whisked away by her uncle to a very remote island beach to keep her safe from things that she has done in her past. Except Evie can't remember any of the things that she supposedly did on that horrible night and also her name is not really Evie and also the man is not really her uncle. This one is described as a really intense thriller, a really like massive page turner and that is so what I need right now. Please give me the mysteries. Because remember, Leanne doesn't try to solve mysteries. Leanne just tries to remain completely ignorant. I want to be the Watson of the piece who has things explained to him ad nauseum and shows occasional flares of intelligence. Totally okay with that. The next one is Pretty Little Liars, which by the way is a show that I have never watched, although it is all available on Netflix. Is this a thing that I should, will this just give me good 90s vibes or should I just, I mean, there are many 90s shows that, hmm. The Prompt for Pretty Little Liars is a book with dark or thrilling themes and for that one I have picked the Chalk Man. I'm listening to this one on audio this time and I am really, really loving it. I always struggle to give people a synopsis for this book. It says on the back, none of us ever agreed on the exact beginning. Was it when we started drawing the chalk figures or when they started to appear on their own? Was it the terrible accident or when they found the first body? That more or less sums it up but also not really. Instead of telling you the exact plot, I'll tell you what this novel does that I really love. It has a slipstream narrative so we are back and forward from the present and the past. You're not sure until about a third of the book in what one of the voices is who it is talking to you and what's really happening and then once you realise who that voice is you're like oh my god and it changes your perception of everything and then you start getting all these additional clues and there are clues literally scattered throughout this novel. The other thing that I love that this novel does is it does continual slow reveals so you think you know what a character is and then all of a sudden there will be like ding also there's this fact and you're like wait 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 Hold on, what? 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 Just think you should read it, okay? Just freaking read it. Look, it was like I actually did a wrap up, but I didn't. I didn't do one of those. Fighting the inadequacy every day. The next one is The Gilmore Girls, and it is, of course, to pick a book from the Rory Gilmore Reading Challenge, which I will link below in case you haven't seen it before. Obviously, Gilmore Girls very heavily featured literature in lots of different ways. And I was so pleased that when I clicked on the list it wasn't just classics because I remember just lots and lots of classics and I'm just not, my brain's not there right now. Mm -mm. But on that list I found a different kind of classic and it was actually a book that I repurchased really recently to reread because I read it when it came out and I think like 99 maybe? And that book is The Curious Incident of the Dog in the Nighttime by Mark Haddon and boy oh boy am I glad that I decided to pick this one up again 
because I'm really, really enjoying it. You guys will probably have heard of this one because of course there is now a massive stage show production of it and it has become one of those books, the kind of cornerstone one foot in a couple of different genres books. But primarily it's about Christopher and Christopher is 15 and he has autism and he has very high functioning autism but he still has lots of problems with learning about his world and learning where he fits in it. And one day Christopher is walking down his road in the middle of the night as he knows he should not do but it makes him feel calm so he does it anyway. I totally relate and he finds one of his neighbour's dogs lying dead on the lawn with a garden fork in it and it spirals catastrophically. The next one is Friends and of course this is the buddy read prompt. So the whole idea of Book Buddyathon is that you can read one or all of these books with your buddy and that you check in with your buddy every day. I mean I talk to Kirsty like multiple times a day anyway but the, just this means that we are specifically talking about certain books as opposed to all of the other books that we talk. Okay you get the point but there's only this one prompt that actually makes you choose a book to read with your buddy and so of course we chose something that has a leg in both of our preferred genres and this is Two Can Keep a Secret. You guys know that I am a massive Karen M. McMahon fan when I read One of Us is Lying I just it was so good so I have tried to go into this one as blind as is physically possible because I just don't want to know I don't want to spoil it but I do know that it is about the death of two homecoming queens one five years ago and one very very recently and the girl who found the first one has kind of accidentally found the second one and the first one was murdered in the Murderland Halloween Amusement Park. I mean, it just, it says Leanne, right? It just says Leanne also. Spread is a piety. It's so piety. The next one that I have is a little bit of a cheat, but it is also a second book that Kirsty and I have decided to buddy read. So this one is Big Bang Theory and it is a book that your buddy thinks you will love. And for this, Kirsty and I have both picked the Flat Share. This is a contemporary romance by Beth O'Leary which revolves around the premise that two complete strangers end up sharing a tiny pokey little London flat and taking shifts in the one bed. So the guy sleeps there during the day because he works night shift and the girl sleeps there during the night because she works day shift and they never really meet but through all of the objects scattered around their flat they get to know each other. I had lofty plans to consume this on the plane and then also on holiday but again and I've been so waiting for it for ages I've had this proof for such a long time and I just want to read it oh my god the next prompt is sex in the city and for that you pick four books and your buddy selects one out of the four books that you have picked and of course Kirsty picked the Hollow Boy, which is the third book in the Lockwood and Co series, but it's because I really, really love it and it's so escapist and so good. It is set in an unnamed time period in London wherein ghosts have returned and the only people that can see them is people who are 18 and below. After that, you can sense that they're there, but you can't see them, so it's much easier to be dead yourself and most of these agencies are run by adults who used to be ghost hunting teens but this one follows Lockwood & Co which is a small ragtag agency of three unwanted ghost hunting teens who just might be getting to the heart of a mystery that they didn't think was a mystery in the first place. This is the third instalment and I don't care what it's about, I'm just gonna consume it. Next we have Girls which is a prompt that I really really love and it is just to read a manga or a picture book or a graphic novel of some sort and for this one I have ticked off my first book of course of the readathon by reading Animal Anatomy by Sophie Corrigan which was a present that I got from my lovely wife Helen for her birthday. Sophie Corrigan has essentially done some stunning illustrations of animals and she has renamed some of their body parts so we don't have ears anymore we have fleshy sound flaps and we don't have a tail anymore we have a curly booty flourish and obviously we have a goat here and we have a violent bash cap for its head and just it's very funny but also just really sweet and feel good so it's perfect 
as a gift I think to any animal lover in your life but I also think it's perfect for you if you just want to sit back with a cup of tea and giggle for a bit because that's what we did. Next we have The OC which is a book with orange on the cover and I didn't want to read any of the books with orange on the cover that I had so I looked at the pile of books that I did want to read and I decided that this colour here which looks very yellow on camera but doesn't really in real life is kind of orange and so I'm going with it and I'm going to be reading The Neighbour by Fiona Cummins which as you can see I already started last year last year I mean I know we're doing badly Liam but we're not doing that badly last month as part of my stack at TBR and did not get to finish and I was so sad about it because I'm super excited for this one too. It is thoroughly creeptastic so far and I just am ready to dive back in head first. The next book is Will and Grace and it is a book with LGBTQIA++ themes and for that I have picked Carry On by Rainbow Rowell. Carry On is a little bit difficult to explain but here we go. Rainbow Rowell wrote a book called Fangirl and in it the girl who was going to college who was the subject of the story wrote fan fiction and the fan fiction was essentially a very loose Harry Potter retelling with Simon Snow instead of Harry Potter and this is essentially the last book in that series the seventh year of Simon and Simon's friends in their Hogwarts replacement and it has it, it has blown people's minds and Kirsty informs me that I must read it so I, I am more than happy to do so. Look at the cover, the next one's coming out soon, it's the perfect time to read it. I'm gonna dive into it and just let my brain be happy. And finally for the book buddy thon we have Glee which is a comfort read and for that I have picked one of my favourite books of all time and that is Hyperbole and a Half by Ali Brosh. I read this aloud to my lovely wife Helen when we very first got together and moved into our own house and I am doing it again and it feels just as charming and just as harrowing and just as cosy and familiar and I just, I freaking love this book so very much. If you don't know anything about Ali Brosh, she is an illustrator and a writer and I think she does script writing and stuff now and uh, she made these comics which started on paint and just they look so 90s it's just perfect perfect for this readathon and she talks about her life but in every funny story what she's actually talking about is anxiety and depression and feelings of shame and worthlessness and it sounds depressing but it's really not it's really uplifting because you're able to connect to her on a really real level it feels like a friend is telling you these horrible things these horrible stories that have happened to her and you're just kind of backhandedly getting to hear them so now as i've mentioned i'm also going to be doing the owls readathon so i have used all of the books for the book buddy thon and the prompts for the owls and there's only a couple of editions where i don't have books in my stack which fit the prompt. So I'm just going to tell you about them and then I'll tell you how I got on with the owls and my mystery chosen careers in my wrap up at the end of the month. So for Defence Against the Dark Arts I needed a book which started with R for Reducto and for that I have picked Remote Control by Andy McNabb. I got this one for my birthday from my lovely wife Helen. I will talk about it a lot more in my haul, my holiday haul, holiday haul and I will tell you why it's kind of more out of my comfort zone and why I'm really excited to read it there. So, you know, stay tuned for that. Accountability. <laughs> and the other one is Herbology. I needed a book with plants on the cover and for that I have picked The Day of the Triffids because in true book buddy a spirit, this is a book that Kirsty loves very, very much and she would like me to read. I have zero interest, less than zero, minus zero interest. Is that a positive? I'm not good at numbers. In reading Day at the Triffids, but I'm going to do it anyway because I'm a nice person and Kirsty is my friend. I would pick all the books up, but I don't think that will end well for me today. So that is everything on my TBR for... April, my anti-stack at TBR. My make my brain happy and just read whatever you want in whatever order you want TBR. And as I say in every one of my videos that I mention mental health in, this is a safe place if you would like to share your mental health experiences in the comments below and connect with other people who have similar feelings, please, please do. I will never ever allow any comments in that section or in any of my videos 
which is at all derogatory about mental health. It, this is a supportive place, I believe, that our community has made this beautiful accepting place where we talk about all of our favourite fictional worlds and why they make us feel great and why they save us and so I think it's worth trying to be there for each other when we're having bad brain days. Okay I'm going to shut up now. As always if you have read any of the books that I've talked about here or if you plan to pick any of them up because I have sold you on them then please tell me about that in the comments and I will speak to you guys soon. Bye! And thank you for putting up with my weirdness again.